How are we doing? Look, we're here giving you a little panorama of fight camp. Man. Wow, what a night. What a night on Saturday. Unbelievable start. Listen, Eddie. To I mean, the live productions in the UK, and we're here ready for week two. Despite of the bad news of, uh, you know, uh, Conor Ben not being able to fight, uh, super entertaining. Congrats on, you know, the new team, the broadcast team. The energy was great. Uh, the Zhukon uh, Lee Wood fight didn't disappoint. Very entertaining. And you said it before the fight. I'll jump right into the main event uh, that. You know, this would be a huge win for, for the UK. Big upset win. Did you see that coming at all, uh, Lee, Lee Wood's performance? Not really. I mean, you know, obviously it's my job to hype things up. And I felt that a Brit, you know, in the UK, although we were only allowed 250 people here, it wasn't like he had 10,000 in Nottingham. But <laughs> I did think Zhu Kan was the big favourite in the fight. I think it was a mixture of just a brilliant performance from Lee Wood perhaps a little bit of inactivity as well from Zoukan. And he was just too good for him, to be honest with you. You know, we didn't see, we saw like the trickery of Lee Wood, a little bit of switch hitting, and it didn't allow Zoukan to get into that rhythm, which makes him so dangerous. You know, the, really the, the best attribute that he has is his volume punching and his engine. And when you can't get into a rhythm and you're just getting, you know, broken down by that jab and Lee Wood was, was, was hurting him really every time he threw. And it was so good to get the stoppage because I struggled to give Zoukan more than three rounds in the fight. And you know, I went on to some of the, the Twitter handles and like Dougie Fisher, I mean, he was like, you know, I've got Zoukan three up, three up after four. I'm thinking, I'm watching the wrong fight. You know, I thought he absolutely schooled him. So to get the stoppage was was perfect. And, you know, it capped a, a great night with some great fights. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, a bit, I'll tell you, Eddie, let me ask you a question. What, what does this say about Ben Davidson? And I'm not taking credit away from Lee. He's the guy in the fight and it made it happen. But is Ben becoming more of like a, one of the best boxing trainers in the world? And should he be respected that way? Yeah, I think Ben Davidson is an outstanding trainer. You know, I mean, I think that really over, you know, your, your legacy as a, as a, in whatever you do comes over time. And, but this is a young trainer. You know, look at his achievements already in the sport. You know, I think people, are quick to criticize i think they used to call him boxer size ben and used to say you know this is just a personal trainer that's you know taking his hand into boxing but you can only respect his achievements and you can't at some point you have to start giving the guy credit you know and and that, a lot of people say that trainers are only good as the fighters that they train but when you start making a big fundamental difference to the career of a fighter that has to really come from the trainer and i think lee wood is a classic example of a guy that was never expected to perform at this level, but has teamed up with Ben Davison and he has started to perform at that level. Now, now, in that case, you can only give credit to the trainer, you know, and I think what Ben does, which is really good, is not only is he a fantastic trainer, he gets the fighter to believe, you know, and sometimes that's half the battle when you go into a big fight. You know, Lee Wood really believed that he could win. And, you know, when you're part of a team that's on a run, you start to, it's infectious. You know, you've only got to look at Eddie Reynoso and, you know, the Canelo team of fighters, but they just start thinking they're unbeatable. And, and Ben Davison has got that feeling now and camaraderie within his, his team. And I think he deserves a great, great, um, a lot of credit. I think it's brilliant to see young young trainers coming through the game. Absolutely. I mean, Shane Spiggan is another great trainer, you know, but he's been around quite a long time now as well. But we need, we need great young trainers in the game. I think Ben is fantastic for boxing. I think Ben Davison is definitely the, that number one draft pick. When I seen him in a, uh... The Devin Haney camp, I was like, okay, people are recognizing his skill set. Now, what's next for Lee Wood? Does he, for some reason, uh, Leo Santa Cruz still has that WBA super oh, belt. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, which, that, you which, know, I don't, I don't, what do you think about that? Well, it's like three years, is it, since he's defended that that title? <laughs> you know, Lee, Lee Wood should be sitting there really as super champion. Um, Golden Boy do have a rematch clause within that contract. You know, they were they were good enough to give us that opportunity from from nothing. Really, they picked Lee Wood which was a nice pick. Um, and I don't know if Zoukan's going to want that rematch. I mean, I don't see how he can beat Lee Wood. The style is all wrong for him. You know, he, he knows that he can hurt him repeatedly nonstop. Maybe Zoukan's team feel like, oh yeah, you know, we were just inactive. We'll be better next time. But for Lee Wood, if, if that rematch doesn't come, I'd like to see him maybe fight Leo Santa Cruz to, to decide who is the real champion at, at, in the WBA uh, division. Right. Also, of course, all eyes on this week at Fight Camp because you have the IBF 
featherweight yeah. world title fight between Kid Galahad and Jazza Dickens. Mm -hmm. Also, you have Navarretti, you have Gary Russell. You know, it's a great division. So Lee Wood changed his life on Saturday and congratulations to him. Eddie, last week you said that the Caleb Plant Canelo fight might still be possible. It looks like that ship has sailed. Is uh, September 18th realistic for Canelo to fight anybody? Um, it's a good question. And I think the answer is we're, a, a decision really is imminent on that because we're seven weeks away. Um, there was a number of conversations with myself and Sal and Eddie and the team over the weekend to basically say, you know, we really have to make a decision. We're looking at a number of uh, options in terms of uh, you know, dates, broadcasters, etc., for that fight because there's been a number of offers that have come in to Saul. Um, Dimitri Bivo is the front runner, in my opinion, for that slot on September the 18th. And I think if it's not Dimitri Bivo, then I think there's a very good chance that September 18th will be put on hold and we'll move on to another date and potentially another opponent. You know, I'll reiterate that he wants that. Uh, plant fight you know it's the undisputed fight but he want, also wants to face other champions so we've been in touch with Dimitri Bivol's team obviously we're, we're on that team with World of Boxing and, and Vadim Kornilov and, and Andre Rybinski they're ready to fight Canelo Alvarez on September the 18th they've been sort of training really for the last two or three weeks in the hope that they do get that pick um, so Berturbiev is not on that list not, not for September the 18th no I think I honestly think that you know, if it's if it's uh, September the 18th, I think Bivol is, is the front runner for that fight. But we'll get together and, you know, we're talking multiple times every day now because we appreciate it's, it's decision time. So uh, I would love to see him fight on September the 18th. You know, it's it's the it's the date, isn't it? So and I think he would as well. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can reach a deal, then um, I think he'll fight on that date. And if not, we'll we'll sit down, we'll reassess and we'll go from there. Uh, what have you been told is the biggest discrepancy with this contract between Plant and Canelo? Is it the 40 million guarantee even if Plant gets sick? No, I think, you know, as I said to you last week, you know, when that offer came in, we all just decided that it was uh, terms that, that he was happy with. Unfortunately, once we got to contract stage, it couldn't be agreed on both sides. I'm sure there's lots of uh, things that people will say they didn't agree on and everyone's got their opinions of what happened, but ultimately it broke down. And it wasn't it wasn't able to happen, so we have to move on. Um, I don't think there's any point talking about why, why, you know, why, when, what, you know, what happened in that. It's just it didn't happen um, from our come side. Come on, come on, Eddie. Yeah. It's just the biggest fight we want. We know we got to ask why. That's always the first well, question. Pro like, probably why? quite a few. Probably quite a few reasons, correct? You know, I think that you, you have to understand, and I don't mean this disrespectfully to, to Caleb Plant, but he won the lottery getting that fight. Mm. Right, he's a world champion, and he deserves to be a world champion. But you know, he was about to make an absolute fortune to fight mm. for the undisputed championship. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it, but when you talk about A sides and B sides, I mean that that that's probably the greatest example of an A side and a B side in a fight. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we don't respect Caleb Plant, but we do. But as I said to you, being quite honest, you know, I wasn't involved in the contractual um, negotiations of that fight. You know, Canelo wanted me to promote the fight on his behalf. Uh, as his promoter, I let the lawyers deal with that and it, it couldn't get made. So it's not that there's this big conspiracy theory. Sometimes right. that happens. But but is it more Al Heyman than Caleb Plant? Because you mentioned it, I, Caleb I, I Plant. Don't, I don't know. You know, I don't want to start, you know, right. pointing fingers. I think we, the truth is we don't really know. You know, I, I don't really know who didn't want to move that fight forward. But obviously, you know, I've, I've, I've done three fights now with Canelo Alvarez and I've never had one problem with any requests or any contractual you know, uh, requests, if you like. So is I don't. It discouraging, I, I, is it discouraging, Eddie, though, because of the future potential fights like maybe a Wilder and Joshua or any other fights on a PVC side? It's every, everything's case by case. You know, ultimately, mm -hmm. if, if a fight doesn't want to get made by someone or someone wants to slow it down or someone doesn't want to progress, then you move on. So I don't think it's, I don't think this is a bad, bad news for future fights. Just right now, Canelo against Plant couldn't get made. We move on. He fights another champion. If we don't do September 18th, maybe those talks open up again and we look at October, November. But we have to keep the train rolling because yeah. it is it's it's the gold train. You know, it's it's the number one 
train out there in American boxing and, and a guy that is just consistently fighting so many great champions. I want to see him in the ring again. The, thing, like that wor- the thing that worries me about the 18th, I, I, I see Canelo's always in shape. As you know, even though you see him on a golf course, the guy's still in the gym, right? He never had an issue making weight. So if he does make a fight on September 18th, I do believe Canelo will be ready, even though it's only seven weeks. But the other opponent, like Kovalev no, complained no. one time, people no, will say yeah, he only had no. seven weeks. I think, I think people... I mean, certainly World of Boxing, Dimitri Bivo a bit more savvy than that. You know, they knew they knew over a month ago that they were in the running for this fight and they haven't stopped training, really. You know, now I know that sometimes it's a bit more difficult if you don't actually know a fight is confirmed. But again, if you, you say Canelo's in shape, show me a picture of Dimitri Bivo ever where he's not in shape. You know, this is a top athlete. This is a young athlete. This is someone that has, has no miles on the clock, really, in the pro game. Never really been touched as a professional. So he's in shape, he's ready. Now, the clock is ticking. You know, we want to get him out. He's been training in Russia, but he really wants to get over to California where he can do most of his camp. And he wants to fly to tomorrow. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So um, all I can say to these guys is, and they're phoning me every day, what's happening, what's happening. But all I can say to these guys is, guys, all I can tell you is be ready. Train like you got the fight. And and, and they're, they're smart enough to do that. You know, they're not... But they're not going to get caught slipping. And I don't think it's Canelo's, you know, um, strategy to to give people less time. It's just, unfortunately, that fell through last week. And we're trying to go through the various offers on the table and decide what we're going to do. And that would obviously land on the zone if it were the case for Bavo. No, not not necessarily. I mean, you know, there's a number of offers that have been made Mm. to Canelo Alvarez from broadcasters. And and we're going through those offers. Um, You know, obviously, our preference would be to do the fight on the zone. We've had a great run of three fights with Canelo Alvarez, but we'll have to see what happens over the next couple of days. Okay, let's talk about one of your other stars, you know, who only Canelo can overshadow a guy who's this popular, and that's Anthony Joshua. Now, we like to give you Bob Arum news, and this particular Bob Arum news is he's saying that he's not sure if Anthony Joshua is an elite fighter. What do you say, even though he has this incredible resume, what do you say I don't, to that? I don't know what else he can do. <laughs> I know. You know right? We just lo- Last week, we were debating that, I mean, I think it was you, Barack, who said he hasn't just got the best resume in heavyweight boxing. He may have one of the best resumes in boxing. No, I said that, that, that was... Oh, you said that. Actually. So, like, <laughs> so, and now we're debating whether he's actually any good. I mean, I just... It, like, it, baffles <laughs> me that, it baffles me that this guy doesn't get more credit. But like, all he's ever done He's worked as hard as he can, right, fight right, right. the very best, and never duck a challenge or a mandatory or anyone in the division, right? And, and at one time, he was trying to tell the people, like, listen, I, I just got thrown into this game. I got thrown into the game. I became gold medal. I got a uh, champion. I got thrown in the game, and I'm, I'm already a champion because of Charles Martin. I really wasn't mentally ready, but now that you got me here, I'm beating everybody, and you're still complaining. Yeah. No, he definitely doesn't need to justify it. His resume. Now, quick, t- two quick questions before you get out of here, Eddie. Look, uh, I know you're busy with Fight Camp, but I need to know if there's any further news on Devin Haney's possible next opponent. And also, is it safe to say if Canelo fight for the 18th isn't announced this week, it's not going to happen on September 18th? Yeah, I think the, the latter one, yes. I think if we don't get a deal done for Canelo this week, September 18th, he's probably off the table. Um, in terms of our schedule, you know, we've got two or three... Um, two or three dates to announce uh, for the US, but we are, as always, just scheduling those around Canelo Alvarez's decision. So they need to be announced this week as well. Regarding Devin Haney, you know, I mean, again, as much as it baffles me, people's comments about AJ, it baffles me that all these guys that keep fighting final eliminators for Devin Haney never (laughs) want to actually fight. So Jojo Diaz, you are mandatory for Devin Haney. So don't you want to fight for the world title? or you want to fight Ryan Garcia instead. I think that Jojo Diaz will give up his mandatory position, and I think he will fight Ryan Garcia. That is what I honestly believe. If not, more than happy to make Devin against Jojo Diaz. Um, But if not, we need one of those top guys at 135 because sooner or later, you know, we've got to make our move with Devin Haney in terms of the big fights. And that might even mean moving, moving to 140. You know, is that a fight with Mikey Garcia or Regis Progre? You know, we're in talks for that fight. I, I, I love Devin against those guys as well. But he's ready. He's ready to fight all those guys. You know what? Something that's probably never been done. They're always forcing the champion to fight somebody. But if you got an interim title, that's a title to them. That's a title you're paying for. Why don't they say, you know what? We're going to strip this if you're not going to fight the champion. 
I think they probably will in this process. I mean, don't forget they took that belt away from uh, Ryan Garcia in the process because obviously he was having his his, uh, his rest from boxing when he was unwell. So I think they should do that, you know. And and I, I just I don't know. Like I, I never believe that fighters don't want to fight other fighters because they're incredibly brave and you know they're they're warriors. But I, I still struggle to see why Ryan Garcia doesn't want to fight Devin Haney, especially when he fought an eliminator to fight him. And even more so with Jojo Diaz. I mean, Jojo Diaz actually has a chance to become, is it a three-weight world champion? You know, I mean, like that, he, he's, he's won a featherweight world title, he's won a super featherweight world title. He could win a lightweight world title against Devin Haney. Yeah. But, you know, we'll Devin see. Haney's obviously very, very good. Yeah. Because let's be honest, let's make one thing clear. If Ryan Garcia's team and himself truly believed that they would beat Devin Haney, why wouldn't they fight him? There's a huge amount of money in the fight. There's a genuine world title on the line. You know, but you choose to fight Luke Campbell and Jojo Diaz. Two good fights, but why not Devin Haney for a low poor money and actually the real belt? I like to see the fight happen. All right, Eddie, listen, thanks as always, man. Congrats on the first week. Looking forward to the next two weeks of Fight Camp, man. Talk to you next week. Cheers, guys. Take care.